Okay, so it's good to know and to be memorizing your exact values. Okay, so again for this, we need to go over first of all what the graphs of our inverse. Now when it says right here arc sine, that's the same as saying inverse sine. It's just two different ways of stating it. Um, it means the same thing. And when we do the graph of arc sine, again recall that the graph of sine was waves, periods of waves that continued on forever. So when we did the inverse, if we were to try to just go ahead and graph the inverse based on our original graph, we got something that looks like this. Again, it was waves, but it went up and down on the y-axis instead of the x. And the problem with that is that this was no longer a function. Um, remember, functions cannot have the same more than one y value for a single x value. And one way we tested that was by doing the vertical line test. And if it touches more than one place on the graph, it's not a function. And notice this one touches here, here, and here and it would continue to touch every time the, that wave came and so this would not be a function so what they had to do for the inverse function is cut cut it off so that it would be a function so that nothing was repeated we had as much as the function as we could but cutting it off so nothing repeats so this is our arc sign the important thing about that is when we're um, evaluating the inverse sine of an angle, our answer is always going to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, um, so that is important to note. Right? For cosine, when they cut it off to make sure it was a function, it's from 0 to pi. Arc tangent or inverse tangent from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And notice these two include their endpoints. This one does not, because remember, tangent have asymptotes there. Um, cotangent is from 0 to pi. Cosecant, like our sine and our tangent, goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, excluding 0, because there's an asymptote there. Um, and then secant, like cotangent and cosine, goes from 0 to pi. And again, the important thing about that is when we're evaluating, when it says evaluate sine inverse of something, okay, your answer will have to be an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so for sine, tangent, and cosecant, you'll be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Secant, it also won't be able to be equal to 0. And when you're doing cosine, cotangent, and secant, your answers will have to be between 0 and pi. That's going to be important. And you'll notice where that comes in, because a lot of times people assume that when they're evaluating, well, sine and sine inverse, they're opposites. They cancel each other out, and I'm left with y. That is the case as long as you're in this range. Okay, But if you're not in that range, then we have to do a little thinking, which is where our either unit circle or the table with our exact values comes into play because they are going to ask you for exact values here. Okay, so here is the, our unit circle with our most basic radian measures we use, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, and repeat it around the circle. Um, also note that tangent is equal to the sine over the cosine. Um, the sine is the y of each point, and the cosine is the x from each point. Okay, so for pi over 6, the sine is 1 half, the cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. The tangent would be sine over cosine, so 1 half over <laughs> the square root of 3 over 2, or we would invert and multiply 1 over root 3, which actually ends up simplifying to root 3 over 3. But there you might want to use the table. You also might want to go through on your unit circle that you have and maybe calculate the tangent for each section. So here I'd put tangent is root 3 over 3. Here the tangent is 1. Here the tangent is just the square root of 3. Okay, um, And continue on that way and fill in your chart so that you know what the tangent is, is at each spot. Um, here the tangent is undefined. Okay. And you could just 
continue like that so that you have the tangents right there handy. That's an optional thing you may want to do. All right, so let's use all of that <laughs> to answer a question. Find the exact value in radians of inverse cosine of the cosine of pi over 4. Okay, now remember, this is going to work as long as this angle is in our range for cosine, which cosine, it said, it needs to be between 0 between zero and pi. Okay, so make sure you have that in your notes. Since pi over 4 is between 0 and pi, so 0 to pi is this range right here, pi over 4 is in that range. So we can just say the inverse cosine of the cosine of pi over 4 would just be pi over 4. But that's only because pi over 4, the angle in question, was in the appropriate range. When it's not in the appropriate range, this one, for example, we want the exact value, that means no decimals, in radians of the inverse sine of the sine of 5 pi over 4. Now, it would be nice if we could just say, well, inverse sine, sine, whoop, cut those out, the answer is 5 pi over 4. But we have to keep in mind that our answer must be, for inverse sine, your answer must come out as something between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, that is our range for sine, tangent, and cosecant. Problem is 5 pi over 4, where is 5 pi over 4? It's down here. That is not between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Darn it. Okay, so what we have to do instead is say, okay, the sine of 5 pi over 4 is what? Right? The sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. We want the inverse sine of that. So that means we want the angle. Inverse sine means what angle has a sine of negative root 2 over 2, but it has to be in this range. So let's look at our sine values. Okay, here's a root 2 over 2, but it's positive. Remember, sine needs to be in this range between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so there's a pi over 2, but it's positive. Down here, we have a negative root 2 over 2 for our sine, and that's our angle. It's listed as 7 pi over 4, but we want to put it in this terminology between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So as a negative angle, that would be negative pi over 4. So our answer is negative pi over 4, not 5 pi over 4, because 5 pi over 4 did not fit in the appropriate range for inverse sine or excuse me, domain. So here we did the, the sine of 5 pi over 4, the exact value is negative root 2 over 2. The inverse sine of that, the angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 that had a sign of negative root 2 over 2 was negative pi over 4. So that was our answer. Okay, we're going to do some more. So let's take a look at this one. Cosine, the inverse cosine of the cosine of pi over 5. Well, it would be, again, convenient, cos inverse cosine, cosine. It would be nice to just write pi over 5. We can if it's in the appropriate range. So what's the range for cosine? It has to be between 0 and pi. Okay, Is pi over 5 in there? Well, pi over 5 is not one of our regular values that we use. However, we can see where it might be. Um, it would be right here between pi over 6 and pi over 4. So it is between 0 and pi. Um, another thing you might check is how many pi's is it? Is it between 0 and 1 pi? And 1 fifth is 0.2, which is definitely between 0 and 1. So it falls in the correct range, so we know the inverse cosine of the cosine of pi over 5 is just pi over 5. I love it when they turn out that way. All right, here we go. Find the exact value in radians of the inverse sine of the sine of negative 2, root, 2 pi over 3. So again, this is asking um, what angle has a sine of negative 2 pi over 3. Well, remember we can whoop, do that as long as it's in the right range. And for sine, that means it has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Where would negative 2 pi over 3 be? OK, 
okay? Well, here would be negative one-third pi, and this would be negative two-thirds pi. Darn it, we're out of our range, because pi over two to negative pi over two would be this section right here, and we ended up right here. So instead, what we do is we go one step at a time, and we say, the sine of negative 2 pi over 3, what's the sine of that angle? It was negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so we're going one step at a time. The sine of negative 2 pi over 3 was negative root 3 over 2. So we write that in there, and now we're asking, well, let's do the inverse sine now. What's the inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2? Or what that means is what angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 has a sine of negative root 3 over 2. So again, our sine values up here are positive, so they are not going to work. It would have to be one down here, right here. This angle has a sine of negative root 3 over 2. What angle is that? Well, it says 5 pi over 3, but if we're going negative to be in that negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 range, it would be negative pi over 3, okay, or negative 1 third pi. This is pulling together all of those things we've gone over, terminal, co-terminal angles, you know, knowing which ones have the same terminal side, reference angles, and things like that. We're using all of that now. All right, here is another. Find the exact value in radians of the inverse cosine of the cosine of negative pi over 8. Well, we could do that if negative pi over 8 is in our range, but remember for cosine, that means it has to be between 0 and pi, and it's not. Okay, 0 and pi is the top half of our unit circle here, and negative pi over 8 would be down here somewhere, about 1 eighth of pi. Okay, so we would try to go one step at a time, all right? So what we would do is, okay, what's the cosine of negative pi over 8? Well, that's not one of our exact values that we know right now. Okay, so let's think through this one, since it's not one of our exact values that we know, okay, negative pi over 8 is not in our range, so we couldn't do that. So where, notice it came out with a negative, where would cosine, cosine positive or negative here? Well, notice all of the cosines are positive in this quadrant. So we want the matching angle up here. Where is cosine positive? Is it in this quadrant or this quadrant? Cosine is our x value, so it's positive here. So the matching angle would be actually be positive pi over 8 and not 7 pi over 8 over here because our cosine value, notice, would be negative here. And we want one that matches the cosine value of negative pi over 8, which would be positive. See, it's positive here and cosine is positive here, right? So it would, our answer is actually going to be positive pi over 8. Now you can put that in your calculator and see what comes out. Okay, now you can, like I said, put that in your calculator just to give yourself an idea of what you're looking for. So you can do the cosine of pi over 8. Okay. And that will give you a positive number. And then you can do the inverse cosine of that, which gives you a positive number. It actually gives you, okay, so I, I evaluated, found the cosine, did the inverse cosine of that, and I got 0.392. Now the problem with that is we need the exact value. So you can use that to check your answer, because then you can say, well, is that the same as pi over 8? And if I do pi divided by 8, I do get the 0.3926. So you can use your calculator to check and kind of to see where you need to be, um, but it's not going to give you the exact value. All right, let's try this one. The inverse tangent of the tangent of negative 5 pi over 4. So again, we have to stay in our appropriate range. For tangent, that's from negative pi over 2, whoop, not equal to, to pi over 2. Okay. Where is negative 5 pi over 4? Okay, well, that would be not quite. Okay, 5 pi over 4 is 1 and a fourth pi, so that would take us to negative pi and then another fourth. Right here is negative 5 pi over 4. 
is it in the appropriate range so that I can just go whoop and my answer be negative 5 pi over 4? No, it's not because um, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is this section over here. Okay, so what we can do is we say, well, it can't be this angle, but it can be the angle in this range that had the same tangent. Okay, so we go one step at a time. What's the tangent of negative 5 pi over 4? Now, if you have your chart, you can just look right at it. If you're using the unit circle and you haven't marked what your tangents are, we would have to go sine divided by cosine. So the tangent would be root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2, which is negative 1, so it can divide by itself. Okay, so then we go, okay, the inverse tangent of negative 1, what, what angle in the appropriate range has an, an um, tangent of negative 1? Well, all of these in the first quadrant would have a positive tangent because it's a positive number divided by a positive number. Down here, tangent is negative, remember? So it would be the angle here that has a tangent of negative 1. That would be our matching pi over 4 here, which if we put it in negative terms would be negative pi over 4. So our answer to this problem is negative pi over 4. All right, inverse cosine of the cosine of 4 pi over 3. So maybe pause and try this out. See how it, if it works out for you. Again, cosine inverse and cosine would, in theory, <laughs> cancel each other out. But you have to be in the right range. So for cosine, remember that is between 0 and pi. 4 pi over 3. 4 thirds is 1 and a third, which means we are 1 and a third. <laughs> So we're clear down here. Darn it. That is not in our range between 0 and pi. So we have to do a little investigating. What is the cosine of 4 pi over 3? The cosine of 4 pi over 3 is the x value here, which is negative 1 half. So we're doing the inverse cosine of negative 1 half. Or what angle between 0 and pi in our appropriate range has a cosine of negative one half. Well, let's take a look. All of these in the quadrant one are positive values for cosine. Over here we have negative values for cosine. We want the one with negative one half, which would be this angle here, which is two pi over three. So the angle between zero and pi that had a cosine of negative one half was two pi over three. And so that was our answer.